Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello and welcome Construction World. I'm Christopher from Oryx Consulting. Welcome back to this week's Oryx Talks. We're with Lindsay from Oryx Care. Lindsay is our resident expert on all things preventative maintenance of the people and the mind in the construction industry. This week we wanted to touch base and, and, and share some knowledge on where to get your information or at least vetting the people that you get your information on for all things mental health and, and life related uh, on the non-work side or non-equipment side uh, for your uh, construction projects or for your people as well. There's quite a lot of information out there these days or there is becoming more and more information. And some of those providers and some of those um, businesses, shall we say, are not giving you exactly what you need to be. So we don't wanna say where to get the information from or where not to get the information from, but we at least wanna discuss what you should be looking at when you're looking for a provider for those types of services. So let's get into this week's Oryx Talk. Hey, Lindsay, how are you this week? Good, good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Been a, uh, as usual, busy week with travel over here. I do a lot yeah. of uh, travel to Dubai at the moment yeah. every day, it seems to be. So that's all right. It's <laughs> how it's got to be for now. Yeah, it's better than sitting around. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's something, uh, something a little bit different, a little bit of a change for a while. So when yeah. I say it's been a change for a while, we seem to have been doing it for about four months, five months now. So anyway. Pretty much since I was there, since before I was there. Exactly, exactly. What's happening in the US? How's things over there? Pretty good, pretty good, just summertime. So it's always busy in the summer around here. Everybody tries to get everything done while the weather's good. So we got, yeah. I don't know, maybe another month of good weather before it changes. Okay. That's something that uh, for those that aren't used to the US or North America and those type of areas, it's really, it's such, um, things are really dictated by seasons over there. Like yeah. I always hear the Americans say like, oh, it's summertime. And it's, you know, coming from Australia, it's like, great. Yeah. Bully, that's awesome, you know. But when you understand that wintertime, it's like our summers over here. Summers over here are just putrid, you know. Yeah. Um, you try to avoid them as much as possible. That's like your winters over there. So it ours is, yeah. is universal here in the Middle East or the Gulf countries. So uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying now. But you have yeah. to, and you've been here in the winter time now, so you know, like after a while, you don't you don't want to go out in it. it well, you haven't been in the bad stuff yet, really. Uh, make yeah. like glimpses of it, but uh, it was right after you left last winter. It was a solid month. We never broke freezing it snowed like six or seven times. So like none of that snow melted and it was just one, yep. one solid month of like just below freezing weather. So uh, you just don't, you, it like wears you down. You don't want to go outside. You, yeah, you only leave the house when you have to. So yeah, this, it, and when summer comes, everybody just goes crazy. And then, you know, this time of year, we know it's winding down. So everybody's even, you know, construction sites, everything. They're just trying, I was talking to my dad last night. They're just trying to, get everything done before the weather changes. So, um, <clears throat> so the mad rush, you know, we, yeah. if we inquiries over here for specialist equipment, um, it will always be winter time when yeah. the owners are sitting on the computer, snowed yeah. in, dreaming, planning, you know, yeah. trying to get things happening for the future. So when, when the weather does turn good, they're ready to hit the ground running. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's like that. And of course, everybody has trying to do fun, do fun things too, and get all, you just got to get all your fun out <laughs> in like yeah. a three month period. So I mean, bringing that back to mental health in the construction industry, though, really good point, you know, like it's, a, mm -hmm. uh, it can change people's mindsets, you know, the summertime, happy, everything's going pretty well, you know, or it could be, we've got too much work, too not much, enough yeah. work. Can't yeah. get the day off that we want to, and all of that. So there's every season over there certainly poses uh, some some problems in and around. It does. Those. It's it's so up and down. Uh, I remember, you know, 
talking to my dad at the beginning of the summer. And for those that don't know, my dad's an, uh, an operator uh, here in Northwest Ohio. So he was telling me, yeah, I want to do this this summer and do that. I want to go to the islands. I want to do all this stuff. And he just, I ran into him last night and um, at the fair and he told me that he hasn't had a Saturday off all summer. Like he gets fit pretty much Sundays and majority of that is spent, you know, laundry, groceries, setting up my little brother for the week. And that's just, right. that's his life. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get some kind of normality and some kind of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. He told me, he's like, I'm going to take some Saturdays off soon. And well, I'll believe it when I see it, but. You had basically <laughs> every Saturday that I've ever known. Yeah. Any. Yeah. 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 He's a worker. He's a worker. Absolutely. So this week we wanted to get into, there's been uh, quite a few uh, uh, opportunities, I should say, or there's been quite a few things that have raised their head over the past month uh, with what we're doing over in the, the US, raising awareness. And some of the things that have come to the forefront, or some of the companies, I should say, that are coming to the forefront that are in this space of supposedly offering services to, to construction workers and people in the mental uh people in the construction industry regarding mental health Lindsay's kind of got a little bit of a uh, a background to to some of those those companies we won't go into it or anything but suffice to say that it, the last thing that, that that is on their minds is actually helping the people actually yeah. getting down to what is it that we want to do and how is it that we want to help the people how can we get our services as directly as we can to the people? Because we can't keep talking, and Lindsay and I speak about this all the time, we can't keep talking about it. Raising mm -hmm. awareness is one side, and it has to be, you know, that has to be the stepping stone, the first point to, to raise awareness on these kinds of things, which is fantastic. But at some point in time, like we keep saying, and why Lindsay has started Oryx Care, is about... We need to provide solutions. We need to provide services. And they need to be directed at the people directly, not mm -hmm. through a gatekeeper, not through some organisation yeah. who's going to vet who gets help, who doesn't get help, why they want help and all of that. And, and it's been a really an interesting month, five weeks, six weeks, something like that, Lindsay? Two months. Two months, has Probably, it? Okay. Yeah. Since okay. I came home and I started, yeah back in okay. june so got you and we really thought that you know we're seeing the a little bit of or Lindsay seeing a little bit of a behind the scenes here and it's and it's really troubling but sort of Lindsay tells me in 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 the frustrated conversations that we have but it's like a light bulb moment at the same point in time as well because it's like well this is why the statistics aren't changing this is yeah. why the workers can't seem to find the help that they need mm -hmm. to change the and to change the mindset yeah. and all of that. It's not just a discussion. I mean, is that a good way of summing it up, Lou? Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a little confusing, I would say. Frustrating, but confusing because I'm trying to figure out what's being done to that actually gets all the way down to the, the guys and the ladies on the job sites. Um, yeah. And I just can't figure out what that is. I, you know, I, when you first start looking, you're like, oh, pe people are talking about it and they're, they seem to be doing something about it. And then kind of the more I ask around and I, uh, the, you know, the people I know in the industry, what, what do you know that's offered to you? And every time I get the same answer, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I don't know. And I, I'll, I, and I'll say, well, do you know about this place or do you know about this um, service? Or, and they be like, oh, no, I've never heard of that before. Or, so I'm, I, I'm just confused in how it's not getting to them. You know, like yeah. that's what's really confusing and frustrating because I spend the majority of my days trying to get my services in front of as many people as possible, yeah. uh, you know, through any avenue I have to in yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it's been confusing and frustrating yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I just see people doing the same stuff, wanting to do the same things and then all the time and not really doing or changing anything and then like patting themselves on the back. 
Yeah, yeah. Look, I remember one of the first meetings that you went to, you were excited, I was excited, and oh, possibilities, as you always do when you're in yeah. business. You know, yeah, you never know how that stuff's going to go, but yeah. No, but at least it's someone contacted me because of, you know, the services that we offer and the services that we provide, you know. Mm-hmm. It's always, when you're in business, that's always great to hear, you know, and another meeting, yeah. let's go off and see how we can help. And quite a large group and what they were trying to do sounded amazing, sounded fantastic, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but at some point in time, you've got to be, okay, what is it that they do? You know, yeah. how is you, you get your message, your service, whatever it is to the people? Or what are the goals? Like, what do you want to yeah. do eventually? Yes. Like, I can, yeah. Who do you help and how do you get that help to them? You know? Yeah. And this is what we really wanted to dedicate this video to is if you're a worker or if you're a manager or if you're a supervisor, if you're a company owner and that, it is going to be extremely difficult because there's going to be some people with some, you know, some, some big, let's say donors behind them or, you know, some, some quite large groups, Mm -hmm. you know, entities, whatever you would like to call it. I mean, these are, these are some of them, uh, these aren't government groups, but they, I'm sure that they, some of these people get government funding and things like that, you know? Um, Depend, yeah, but, depending on where and uh, yeah, where you're at and how far along they are in the process, I think. Yeah, yeah. But once you get into the actual the hub of the operation or the engine room, as I like to call it, and you speak to the people, there was no direction. There was no nothing. Absolutely mm-hmm. nothing. And no. you brought up, okay, how are we helping the people? How do we get the information to the people? And it was crickets. It was literally mm-hmm. like, what do you mean? Yeah. Isn't this to help people? Like, what, what are we doing yeah. here? You know? And yeah. it was, when you were speaking to me, it was every other tangent other than helping. The last thing on their mind was helping individuals. Yeah. And I can and just that, tell by, like, even just looking on social media around, like, a general theme I see, like, the language being used and the the message, it's not even targeted to in a way that is going to resonate with anybody in the industry on a job site like it won't even resonate with them like the words the phrases the messages it's um yeah it's the the messaging you told me something the other day and the second that you told me it was like a a um it wasn't it wasn't a joke to me it was so infuriating like it was beyond yeah. infuriating when I heard that. And it's not for the construction industry. But that no. has no place in the construction industry. And that phrase will be the quickest way to, to turn, turn off people off. Mm-hmm. Not some people, everyone, everyone. in the construction industry. Yeah. They'll tell you, go and you know where to go. You know, it, yeah. that infuriated me when I when I heard it that. Did. And yeah. you know, and it was still let's get more people, let's bring in more people and another expert and another expert. And you've basically laid everything out, right, this is how we need to hit social media. This is who, how we need to get the message directly to the people. This is mm-hmm. how we can help you achieve yeah. what we think it is that you should be able to, 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 yeah. to help people of the industry and move the statistics. That was your, your services were literally like, yeah, that's real, that's good. Ambitious, even I think one of the words that was thrown yeah. around. Was, Whoa, yeah. okay, no problem. Big problems need ambitious solutions, so I didn't take offense to that at all. It's true, they are ambitious, but no, no you've been around me too long, that's for sure. Yeah, but that's you know, they're the types of things that okay, when you set out with a business, you know, you need what they call as a business model. Mm-hmm. A business model, how are we going to make money? You know, yeah, those kinds of things, it's what are we going to do and how are we going to make money? I should, uh, I should be a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more knowledgeable on that, but it, it's literally, you know, what is our purpose? How are we going to make money out of that purpose? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. They seem to be jumping to how are we going to make money out of it without knowing what it is that we're doing and who it is that we're helping, you know? Yeah. So bringing that back to the, to, to the people of the construction industry here, 
we understand and we uh, we totally get your frustration that maybe you're finding, you know. So I think um, from my perspective as someone that's worked extensively in the construction industry on many different continents and all of that, let's start with breaking down that, that the people in the mental health space, I suppose, where there's people that are, that are wholly and solely there to raise awareness. That's mm -hmm. their campaign. That's what it is that they do and everything like that. So as a person in the construction industry that's trying to look for help and reaching out and people to follow and all those kinds of things, just be aware that there's people that, that are there to raise awareness mm -hmm. and then there's people like Lindsay and Oryx Care that's there to help, you yes. know, is to actually provide you solutions. And yeah. That. So and there might be people who are doing a little bit of both, you know, like, um, like uh, my friend like Rob with the pod with the mind who had podcast he he's an awareness campaign but he's also doing things on job sites to help people get to where they need to go so there there can be both but um yes I do run into you know he's doing those cool QR codes and all that stuff but but the majority of the people you're coming across are just there for awareness yes. um so yeah I think it can get lost in translation okay yeah, that's great. Okay. I think I, I think maybe I'm having some mental health issues. What does awareness do? There's gotta be other than that aha moment. Like I need some help. What yeah. do you do after that? You know, that's what concerns me about these, these organizations, these awareness campaigns, because I don't see follow-up. I don't see... It in today's day and age, and this is just my take on this, you know, as a company owner, as someone that's managed people for many, many years in, in some pretty, you know, remote conditions and, and high stress conditions. In my opinion, the awareness stage, like it's got to go, it's got to happen. Like even what does, Oryx, yeah. Care, Oryx Consulting is doing is always mm -hmm. raising awareness. So yes. people can read the information free of charge and get as much information as freely and as, and as easily yeah. accessible as you can. But it has to be backed up with something that is a solution as well. Now, yeah. in this day and age, in 2021, this is not just started. These, these awareness campaigns and, you know, like just look at Australia, UK, places like that, years, decades of raising awareness and all those kinds of things. But if you're doing that, in my opinion, in 2021, and then at the tail end is just a number, I'll use it like in Australia, they've got a number for lifeline. Hotline and numbers, yeah. Hotline numbers, you know, mm -hmm. which is great. People need those numbers. You need to know that they're aware of yeah. them. Well, there is, as a company owner, I can get that number and plaster that on every crib room myself. What do mm -hmm. I need an awareness campaign about that? To for, do that, you know? yeah. You know? And it's not even just my understanding of, you know, with, I was trained to, to becoming a social worker to understand people in their environment. So it's, that's what's so unique about what I feel that I do and what I offer is that it's the understanding I have of people, but it's also my understanding of people in the industry. And that's, um, yes. everybody wants to turn to these really generic Instagram models of mental health because everybody's on Instagram talking about mental health now. Um, which is great. I think it's awesome that people are talking about it. Um, but they want to turn to these generic, these generic models on, you know, that they see on the internet or that they hear on TV or whatever it does for the, in, for the construction industry, for pipeliners, that stuff just does not work. It, it you got to have something specific to them. There's nothing like that for the industry. And I've, everybody I see in the industry wants to use these same things that don't work that most of the time the person who's being sent to them is going to have a three week wait to even get in if they can get a hold of anybody at all i mean the 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 programs a lot of say companies will set companies unions whatever will send their people to there's such long waits i mean i i used to i interned at a place like that i know how long it took for people to get into yeah. them because the because there's not enough mental health professionals, the, the openings are slim. So why not adopt something that's specific to the industry so they don't have to wait, you know, so they, and it's their 
struggles, their pressures, their work, everything is going to be taken into consideration already from the start. So you just hit on a really good point there too, Lou. It's a lot of those places, if they do have anything at all, it's a cookie cutter. Yes. That's for your company. That's for your company. That's for your company. And as a small business owner, a big business owner, all of your needs are different. You know, like yes. if you're running a finely tuned machine, okay, how is it that you can easily get that information accessible to my people? You know, yes. not a big organization where I've got that much fat in a job that I can pull all the people in and have them sit down for a whole day and bring some expert yes. in that's worth thousands to speak to us and all of that. Again, that probably but, doesn't understand the industry that much. Absolutely not. And that's, that's mm -hmm. the big thing here. You need to get a custom. You're in the construction industry is as custom as it comes. Everything mm -hmm. is different. You know, like even two building contractors, you know, the types of equipment that they use, the mindset that they use to build, all kinds of different things, the environments that they're working in. You know, an electrical contractor in the northwest Ohio is going to be totally different to a guy that's in, you know, western Texas. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's just everything, the challenges that you face are different. You know, the work itself is the same. Mm -hmm. it's like this get a custom approach to what it is that you're trying you know get a custom solution mm -hmm. to the problem you know so get a solution in general get a solution get a start with a solution yes. <laughs> and then, then go from there like quit using the same stuff that does not work yeah yeah because it's just well this is what we've always done and this is this is just the i mean it blows my mind like i i've even heard people from these other organizations be like I don't know what we do for the construction industry <laughs> and yeah that's really hard for me and I just see I see these places almost taking advantage of well they and I speak to you about that and I you know I really um anyone that knows Lou knows that that Lou's very um very political you know always wants to keep as many people happy on both sides of the fence as, the fence as possible. That's not me, that's not who I am, yeah. that's not how I'm built. If, you know, I'll, I'll call people out and I'll call out, um, I'll call out bad behavior in the industry, you know, whether that's mm -hmm. people that don't know what they're doing when they're constructing a job or people claiming that they're helping people when the last thing on their mind, they're trying to help themselves. It's been blatantly obvious with what I've seen at least in the last month, that it's, it's all about well, me, us, yeah. I, there's not one, every time that you've brought up, okay, but what about the people? I mean, even some of the comments are around, well, unless they're a member of this particular organisation, then I'm sorry, we can't help them. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Right. So you're not there to actually help people. Construction yeah. industry pipeliners, whatever, whatever industry that you're in, it's a family. Yeah. And if your solution does not revolve around family and everyone's family is different and everyone house, everyone's house is different, if your solution doesn't involve that, forget about it, you know? Yes, that's, yes. I'm and really that's just where I'm, yeah, that's where I'm at with it too. I just, I don't care. I don't care what fancy words you want to use and what, I, I just don't care. My only concern is the people who are having a hard time. However, I need to get to them and to let them know I'm here. I don't care about the rest of it. I don't care about all the layers. I don't care about all the organizations. I don't care about any of that. I just want to get to them. You know, and I have conversations with, when I do have conversations with the people who are struggling and when they really open up, I'm just like, this is a huge problem. This is a really big problem. Like these are, these are big issues. And- but on top yeah. of that, those big issues, it's a big issue even personified now because of the world that we're currently living yeah. in. Yeah, it's just gotten worse. Yeah. And it's just, and to be using the same approaches, if you're using any approach at all now in 2021, you know, those hotlines are so overran by calls, you'll be lucky to, to get any help from hotlines or to get into those programs that they've always used. It's even harder now. Those hotlines, just so everyone's aware, if, you, if you're not aware, they're for everyone that's struggling. Yeah. Yes. From every walk of life, from, you know, mm -hmm. 
canine which just they're great and they're just doing everything they can right now i mean they would just literally be in uh um, triage mode like all the time all day long they'd just be trying to stop the bleeding so i get like those hotlines are fantastic but now is the time where you have to really start paying attention to this because the help there's been a mental health professional shortage forever and yes. the and now mental health issues have just skyrocketed in the last two years so that's that's a major issue and if companies don't think it's affecting them they're just blind they just they're, ter- they're closing their they're closing their eyes to it because there's just no way that it's not every time that you're if you're a company owner if you're a manager whatever and you you know some of the comments that you've seen Lou over the time you mm-hmm. know like I uh, just take a cup of this spent powder. Hey, I was one of those people once upon a time. Yeah. Just stop and think back and think when you had a really good boss that was proactive, a true leader, led mm-hmm. from the front, was there in the trenches with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then think back to a bad person that you had. And how, just think about your production, how product, productive you were personally, how productive your crews were, uh, how productive your project was, you know? I've been to, you know, I've worked on construction pro- or pipeline projects. They were just run by absolutely, there was the, the, the loonies were running the loony bin. That's, yeah. that's literally, and the jobs reflected that. So, of course, your work ethic reflected that, you know, and mm-hmm. everything became a problem. There was a problem for every solution on those jobs. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it's how they, they are. So just think about that. When you think that there's no problem and I don't have an issue, okay, maybe you don't. But have you stopped to think about or at least put a questionnaire out there? Yeah, you know, around- that's what I was just going to say. Yeah. Not so much. Of- yeah, that's like it's it's always people that I, that say that stuff to me. It's The people who I get the most honest feedback are on jobs. They're on the mm-hmm. job sites. You know, they, they, get, they give me the most honest, most genuine, most eye-opening input on the issue. The people who are never on job sites and they sit in an off- office all day and they want to sit there and say, I just don't think it's an issue for us. I just, I don't buy, like, I just, it's hard for me to not just laugh in their face. Yeah. To be honest. The statistics prove otherwise. I mean, yeah. you know me, I'm a guy that follows. Companies I've met with, yeah, that I know employees who work for that company are telling me one thing and then the people in the office are telling me a different thing. Yep. That's just a, that's as big a sign as I need. Exactly right. Exactly right. Well, if again, like you've said many times before, if it's working, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? Yeah. But all of that is trying to fix it once it's broken. Once yes, it's as low as it can be, and 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 you're at your lowest points and all of that. What you're trying to do, Lou, is trying to fix it. Exactly what we do with the the the. You know, preventative side and the equipment and preventative yeah. and mm-hmm. putting every all the procedures and, and things in place to execute on your job and to succeed. Yeah, that's what you're trying to do with the people and the work crews and the brains and all of that. You know, like yes. it's, it goes hand in hand. And you know, at the end of the day, too, I, I am also just one person, but and I'm not saying that my services are going to solve all these problems, but they're actual services there that can be easily accessed. The more I dig, the more I find what the approaches they're taking and they'll use, they'll try to just, oh, well, well, that's a safety person. They can deal with that. Or, you know, we'll put one of our safety people's on people on this, or they try to, they try to cut corners and they don't realize how detrimental that is yeah. because they don't, I get it. It's, it costs money and things like that, but it's a small amount of money for the amount of, for the return that, that you get in yeah. investing in that sort of thing. And it's just, yeah, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch. And sometimes it's really, it's kind of insulting sometimes when you go to these, when you talk to these people and it's like, oh, well, we can get somebody within to do that. Yeah. But it's, but- it's never anybody who knows what they're doing. You know, I, I've heard people say this goes, This goes, this has to be not just suicide prevention, but it's got to, we got to do something before that. But when you, when you ask them what that is, how are you going to do that? What's your plan to do that? They have no idea. So you can talk about that stuff all you want, but 
if you don't know what you're doing, what's the point of doing it? But uh, yeah. that's the whole point you, you said that before you, you're just one person, but yeah. what the services that you're offering is you're offering your knowledge and education mm -hmm. to train, not a safety, per okay, if it's a safety person, that's great, whatever. It's to train the people, the crews, on how to communicate, how to talk to people, how to understand yeah. different people. Your yeah. uh, purpose out there, your, your, everything that you're about and being is to give them the knowledge to go out and yeah. prosper. It's yeah. not to come it's to not me therapy, on, it's on not, and help yeah. you and there's no one else that can help you. It's got nothing to do with that. It's no, about- It's a trickle down effect. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's what preventative is. It's the same as when I go to a project to help people. I'm not there to fix the machine. I can go and fix the machine. I've got no issues fixing anything anywhere. Yeah. It's about training the people on how to fix that machine. It's yeah. about training the people in the office to change the way that they're trying to build their project with 6,000 machines instead of 2,000 machines. You know, like yeah. this is, it's, it's, a, it's a mental change across the board Yes, you're one person, but the, the services that you offer are to change, bring people and, and get them into understanding what prevention is and yeah. how to communicate and how yeah. to see the signs of something going wrong and, and all these kinds of things. So, yes, on one side, you offer the services, the one-on-one -on -one con uh, consulting for, for people that are, you know, having difficulties on a job site or having difficulties understanding. That's one side of the equation. And that's really to get directly to the people that need the help them, you mm -hmm. know, them. That's number one. But the one. broader side is. Correct. That's mm -hmm. the back end side of it is to train, pass the knowledge on so it never gets to that point. Yeah. Into, you know, so, so that's what we keep talking about when we say solutions. It's always yeah. got to be solutions based. So we understand that there's so much information out there that it's is easy to get lost in all of it i get lost in it and you're continually telling me stories that i just have no words and i've said i said on a message uh, during the week and i said i just have no words i have no words for that because yeah this is an industry yeah. that i've dedicated my life to you know what i mean and, yeah. and i've had dark days in my times not super dark days like some have had but i've had dark days in my time and there was nothing in those days i mean there was yeah. nothing in the gender of the day I got nowadays, a message. Sorry. No, nowadays it's different. Nowadays yeah. is, you know, we understand that and that's what you do as societies is how it's a judge on your society. How well do you look after your people? Yeah. Are your people prospering? Are they moving forward? Are they, you know, constantly gain, uh, en engaged and gaining knowledge and all those kinds of things, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a, I got a message yesterday from a person on LinkedIn, we were chatting about my, something about my, my services or whatever. And it, their reply was just so, such a classic guy who's worked in the pipeline industry for a really long time. And it was a really just like, oh, I'm, I'm really tough. And it takes a little kind of crazy to, to work in the industry and stuff like that. And it just, it kind of made me chuckle. And I knew exactly what I was going to say back. And I, it went fine. But I'm thinking to myself, this is what would somebody who knows what they're they're doing supposedly what if they got that message they would have no idea how to approach that and what to yeah. say because they don't none of them not a lot of people that I've come across have actually taken the time to understand their people and why that kind of stuff comes out of their mouth you know what I mean so that's where I struggle it's like so many people who want to get involved in this movement the, the mental health movement they have no idea. They never take the time to get to know the people. Yeah. And that's but that's where I struggle. We're not saying you've got to stop being a rough, tough yeah. guy, girl, whatever. It's got nothing yeah. to do with that. Like, no. look at me. I've got compassion for everyone that I've worked with and, I, and I've built some amazing crews over the years and crews that can't even speak English, you know. I took yeah. crews here um, back in 2005 Lindsay knows these stories but I, I really like to throw stories in here so people can understand I got told when I first came to uh, the Emirates in 2005 how useless everyone was you know people from 
these third world countries that were working over here and how bad they were and they were afraid of the dark and everything exactly how everything how bad they were so much negativity now they were motorcycle mechanics from karachi in pakistan but they knew how to use spanners and now it's up to me to train them on the equipment that we had so that took me to get into the field with these people day in day out night in night out and all of that to fix the equipment bring it up to a standard and pass on as much knowledge as i can just because they're from another country and just because we couldn't communicate with the the english language didn't mean that they didn't understand what i was showing them and telling them what to do you know like yeah building crews takes compassion and one of the things like we couldn't you can't run pipeline maintenance if you can't fix equipment at night time. You just can't, you know, they're meant to be productive during the day, maintain during the night. Well, the, the office, they, they, no, there's just no way you can work at night time. So I watched them and I watched the workers. Well, what are they doing? Well, okay, if the expats that were in the office were getting them to work if they worked at night time on top of the 12 to 14 hour days that they were already doing. Not giving them any extra sleep, no extra time for washing, cleaning, food, anything like that. Get on the bus at 4.35 o'clock in the morning and go back to work. Okay, let me just treat these people like human beings. And yeah. Give them an hour break after work and we can take it from there. Well, these people were lining up when I left the, the country back then for the simple reason that here's someone that looked after me Here's someone that's trained me, educated me, and they went on. They went on with the company and did a fantastic job. And, you know, that's all it takes. It takes mm -hmm. humanity. You know, they're the sorts of things that you learn over time. And that's why you need to pass that knowledge on that, you know, don't shut down, open up. That's what being, yeah. you know, a rough, tough construction worker is all about, is opening up and understanding and looking at things and why does it happen that way? I didn't have all the answers. I used to go to people that I relied on all the time. You know, why do people do that? Why is that? The amount of questions that I've asked you to better understand the human being, because that's all anything is in life is understanding human yeah. behavior. It is, yeah. And just getting, just getting out of the like getting out of your own way. Like I just see so many people who get in the way of progress. Yeah. Y you know, like it's it's. If you don't, if you're not, if you're talking about mental health and you're not doing it for genuine reasons, then you're just going to get in the way. Yeah. And that's, that's really the, if you have selfish motives to help people, like you're just, you're, 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 you're just interrupting progress. And, and that's the common theme I see. Not only do people not take the time to get to know their, who they're trying to help, they also, they also stop them from getting the help. Like in a roundabout way, they actually prevent them from getting well, the help too. What you've been doing recently is 100. They've blocked you every step of the way. Yeah. For every solution, they've got a problem for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, I just don't have that, any interest in that anymore. Because <laughs> you're, you're dealing with people at their, their most vulnerable. Yeah. You know, like all of that. No one yes. wants to up about those kinds of things and especially rough tough construction workers whether that be male or female you know like yeah. oh i need help yeah i, I hear that a hundred times a day in the construction industry yeah <laughs> never would you hear that in the construction no. Industry, no unless they were stuck underneath a truck or something like that <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah yeah you're just <laughs> they're, they're definitely not the ones to step up and say that ever but so yeah. that's where, you know, getting back on, on, uh, on track here a little bit, getting those services tailor-made to your, it should be seamless. You don't yeah. need to be in someone's office all day, every day. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to, you need, and this is like your services that you offer, Lou. First thing is to find out what the problem is. Mm -hmm. It's like anything. You've got to find out what, what, if any, are the problems. Yeah. That's what. The first thing that Lindsay does is go and give you a questionnaire to fill out anonymously to your workforce, electronically, on paper, whatever, whatever works with your guys, guys and girls. Get that back, break it down, get the information. Okay, 
what do we need to address on your job site? These seem to be the big sticking points. You can put then put the report together, give it to the, to the client. They can then ask for your services to help, you know, implement any changes. What changes would you recommend? What mm -hmm. can we do here? And a lot of times we keep saying it. A lot of times it's not big things. It's no. basic communication. It's basic understanding, you know, and these guys, are, which led us into something else. How do we get the knowledge to the people that need it the easiest possible way? One of those things that we've come up with right now is a subscription service. You know, it's as, it's as basic as basic can be. Getting information monthly sent out to you, regardless mm -hmm. of whether you want it or you don't want it, but getting that information and the, 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 first, um, the first newsletter, if, if you will, that, that uh, Lou put out is literally breaking, it, breaking down one topic. So the, the first topic was communication because we keep bashing on about this. It's the number one issue. Under that, it's broken down for the manager, what to look for, signs, what you can do, what you should do, then the worker, and then the remote worker. We try and keep on those three major topics or three major subtitles, if you will, because the manager has a different perspective of, perspective of looking at something to the worker. So you mm -hmm. need to break those two down into something, you know. Then you've got some, you know, um, Valerie from Australia, um, French background on nutrition. Like nutrition is, is, is as important for anything to do with mm -hmm. performance, health, all those kinds of things, you know. Put dirty fuel into your motor car and see what happens to your motor car, you know. Yeah. And that's not this is what you've got to do and we're going on a keto diet in the, in the construction. It's got nothing to do with that. It's literally small little pieces and snippets of information to better who you are and better your body to perform the best that you can on the job site and at home for your family. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's yeah. all of that. Then there's some links to, um, to some videos that we've done so people can jump in their excavator, jump tip. in their you know, and then self-care tip. Yeah, yeah, self-care tip. Which I'm actually, going forward, it'll be the self-care tip and the nutrition trip tip will actually kind of align, which will be... Okay, yeah, good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this information coming out to you monthly is just like it's it's the first step. It's a, subs what we call it, it's a subscription service because the workers can get it. And I'm talking like in some countries, less than a cup of coffee a month for these services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll then get a substantial discount on Lindsay's one-on-one uh, -on -one hour consultation services. Um, this is all set up for the workers, you know, and the managers mm -hmm. and those kind of things, but not for the company owners. This is more for the people that work the people, for the yeah. company. Yeah. Uh, and then a, uh, I think it was an hour service built into that, into yeah. that subscription. So you get an mm -hmm. hour for free consultation service with Lindsay. Um, you will get a monthly e-newsletter sent out to you with information that you can compile together. You can read it. You can click on the video links and you can listen to it while you're, you know, while you're operating the machine, whatever, if your company allows for those kinds of things, you know. Um, there's so much knowledge to pass on just to help people, you know. Yeah. And, Honestly, for a cup of coffee a month, it's pretty. It's a it's a ripper deal. I know that. Yeah. But the reason for that, the absolute reason for that, is to get to the people. Yeah. That's what it's about: is to get to the people that need the help and make it as simple as possible. So then, there's another package for the business owner that Lindsay's working on now. Um, that will be a package that you know it has the information where people can doesn't matter where your workers are, can access that information through the company's own um, mainframe, internet, service, mm -hmm. whatever you like to call it, where they can access, if they are feeling like the world's falling in on them, uh, what's a really good example here, Lindsay, you know, like uh, some anxiety, bang, yes. they can click, right, what's, what, mm -hmm. what are my tips for anxiety? So from a company perspective, that's a one-hour outlay that's not going to break the bank, trust me. It's, yeah. you, you would pay more for your mailing service than what you would for that. 
Now that package, you've got that forever. Lindsay will update it with information and things like that. So there's, there's packages that we're working on for real solutions at the, in, the, in the background here, because you can talk about something to you blue in the face. Yeah. If you're not going to do anything about it, therein lies the problem. And that's yeah. where we're kind of, we're kind of at in the construction industry. Oh now. yeah. Yeah. I'm sick of the talk. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah I, that's kind of just me though too i'd uh i'd rather not just sit around and talk about stuff yeah. i'd rather do something about it i've never been a you know even you know even like as a therapist like when i used to work in like direct practice with clients uh when i was still in grad school i it wasn't so much i hated my least favorite sessions were the vent sessions. You know, some people just wanted to come in and just vent and get stuff off their chest. Like that's fine if that's what they need. I was more interested in, okay, what can we do? What can we do to improve this in your life? You know, we can sit here and talk about it all you want. That's fine. But yeah. what are we going to do to to solve this? So you don't feel the need to not complain but then or whatever so you don't feel that weight on you all the time like I'm always been more solution focused so it's hard for me it's really hard for me to go and have three hour meetings and just talk and accomplish nothing like that's extremely hard for me like I'm just busting by the time I leave there but that's a really good analogy with that is, is like going to the mechanic and the mechanic saying yep she's fucked yeah and he's no back. shit that's yeah, like, that's yeah. really where the industry's at right now. Mm -hmm. Right on. So let's get some more government funding. Let's get another awareness campaign and some hashtags and some yeah. you know like if you're not, it's a really good way to to see how serious someone is, I believe, and mm -hmm. to see what they are doing on social media. I mean, that's where everyone's attention is these days. Whether yeah. you like it, you. Like it, it's got nothing to do with it. That's where everyone's attention is. Mm -hmm. If they're not passing on information, reaching out, doing all that on social media, then what are, you know, I, I have no idea. I have no idea, yeah. you know, uh, getting everything electronically. Awareness campaigns like, that put out no awareness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just... Yeah. I struggle with it, for sure. Yeah, but it, sure. so you should. It should be frustrating for someone that wants to help. It's extremely if frustrating. frustrating. So, yeah. If you're not frustrated, you're in the wrong industry. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you're doing the wrong job. There's been times where I've literally been, and I'm sure my demeanor has come off this way, where I've been in meetings with people and I just sit there like, like this, like lean, like just, you know, typical bad body language, just, uh, super annoyed, super frustrating, where I could just get up and, and if I, if it were you, I know exactly how you would handle it. You would get up and leave and tell them to call me when, you, yeah. Time is valuable, you know what yes. I mean? Like I, and that's like I'm, where I'm at with it. That's, yeah. it takes everything in my power to not be yeah. um, extremely like rude. Honestly, yeah. the things going through my head are not nice. <laughs> and I, I that's something that everyone learns in business too and any yeah. business owner knows this when you get to that point and you finally snap that's when stuff happens because yeah that's your purest thoughts that's yeah. where you've got the most amount of passion the most amount of energy and and people yeah. wake up at that point when you're nice and i know how nice that you are you've been to meetings with me in dubai yeah. on how many floors that we've been up and i've been in a yelling match with someone they're yeah. yelling at me, telling me how useless they are. They're trying to tell me how great they are, but they're telling me when I can say that I yeah. can remove percent of your machinery and people from what you're doing right now. And they're screaming at me, telling me, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, here's the pictures, here's the videos of what we've done all around the world. You obviously know something that I don't know. But even that's the flashbacks, even the flashbacks are uncomfortable. <laughs> That's passion, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. Going to, um, Are you thinking I'm of the guy who started drawing stuff out on the paper for you yeah. and explaining and to you how pipelines work? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. 
that's the problem. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oxygen fleet comes to mind very quickly, I can tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. But not only was he building jobs, he was in charge of the company building the jobs. I could tell, yeah. That was a pretty fancy office. That's right. That is frightening. Mm-hmm. Oh, Can't yeah. tell me, why would I want to build a job six months faster? Yeah. Anyone else what? this? From well, what are we gonna? From, what are we gonna do? What are we? What are we gonna do after six months? Here's an idea: go and get another job with the same amount of people, with the same equipment, do double yes. the amount of work, and double your profit in that time. How does that sound? Yeah. Okay, we will think about it. No problems, okay. China. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely didn't think about it. It's crazy. That's where you are with your information. Like, here's a solution. It's not going to break anyone's bank or anything. Yeah. yeah. I used to think you were overreacting until it started happening happening to me. <laughs> like, Jesus, he's really mad. It's a little dramatic, but okay. <laughs> Not anymore. I get it now. You get it because you're passionate mm -hmm. about what it is that you, you do. But more so how much you can help people. It's yeah. literally like all I want to do is help you. This has the people that I feel like I'm screaming are, that. I, yeah. The people that you're talking to just want your money and have absolutely no solutions for you. Here I am, I've got nothing but solutions. It's going to cost you, like, it's pennies on the dollar. Literally yeah. pennies on the dollar. The return on investment of what it is is exponential. A productive, yes. happy, healthy work crew with extremely productive equipment, you're unstoppable. You are yeah. unstoppable. You know, and, and a continual review of that, Unbelievable. So, something I've been thinking about lately too, I know like so many everywhere, not just construction companies, there nobody can get people to work. Yep. And I know the industry is hurting for workers. So why wouldn't you want to be a company that people want to come to work to? Obviously, people don't have to work right now if they don't want to. So why yep. not entice people to come and want to work and make a good living but do it at a place that yep. prioritizes them and I'm not saying you have to cater to every single feeling that everybody has but yeah. it's just prioritizing your number one asset which is your people and that's just that is just going to it's an easy way to put you ahead of everybody else 100% 100% to me it is I just I mean and it's going and I know I know because I spend time with the upcoming generation you know I have a little brother who is about to turn 17 and I volunteer with a 4-H group that is all teenagers like I know how the next generation is and I'm not saying that they're bad they're all really good kids but I know how they are and you yeah. if you want them to enter your the industry and come work for you there's very, there's not going to be guys like you and my dad and, and all yep. those tough guys that went to work right out of high school and have just been working their ass off ever since. But it's, yep. That generation is going to keep getting older and older and they're going to be gone eventually. This, these next generations, they're different. Yeah. And whether we like it or whatever, whatever your personal feelings are on that, it's just, it's what it is and it's what it's going to be. It's so, relevant. When mm -hmm. I came here, 2005. I I could jump up and down and say I want a crew of Australians over here. I wasn't going to get it. Yeah. I had a crew of motorcycle mechanics from Karachi working on 90 ton pipe loads. That's yeah. what I had. That's mm -hmm. what I had to work with. So yeah. it's up to me to make something of that. You know, and that's yeah. that's character builds and all of that. And that's what all of this is about. Is just passing that knowledge on for people that haven't been put in that situation. You know. Yeah. You yeah, we're, that's what we're all going to have to work with before too long. It's just, yeah, it just is what it is. Now coming to the Middle East and seeing the countries over here and the workers and all those kinds of things, you know, like you've seen that firsthand now. So you even have a deeper knowledge again to most people in the US and all of that as well. You know, yeah. Like, and I don't that think, is, yeah, 
that employee retention that you're talking about, like even just for that sake, you know, you've got mines in Australia now who are, you know, if you sign up to go to a mine site because of what it entails to get people on the on forwarding and all of that, because of, I call it corruption, they call it, you know, all these got to have this ticket and oh that's that's if you have a ticket in the normal world well that's not recognized in the mining world and yeah we you've got to come through our gateways and accredited people it's the biggest load of horseshit i've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> but it's their industry that's how they want to run it do it right no yeah worries at all. but now they're saying that you won't these this this financial um clauses in there that if you don't do I think two months with them or a month or something like that then you will have to pay for that training that they the mine site wanted you know yeah there was one company in Australia that uh, that I used to do a lot of work with and 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 I'm I'm generalizing here but the numbers were horrendous horrendous they had something like I think it was like three thousand three and a half thousand four thousand workers or something on all their mine sites and 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 um, workshops and all these kinds of things, they turned over eighteen hundred people in a year. One thousand eight hundred out of say four thousand people. That's unreal. Like that and, and uh, my friend there was telling me about this, and him and I were like, "Can you put a dollar figure to this?" Like, yeah didn't want to because we knew it would be absolutely oh horrendous. yeah it would probably make you sick it would make you vomit mm -hmm. it really would like the yeah. money that is wasted just on that where for the sake of a cup of coffee they could say to all their employees right we're paying this for you every month here you go here's the information yeah. that comes out to you and here's the services that you get out of that you know simple here's yeah. the management package that you can put on your database where all of your mine sites all around the country they can readily go anywhere they're, they're in the safety of their donger or their you know their crib room or wherever the, the case may be boop, zap a barcode bingo bango job done there's the information on anxiety that's how yeah. to cope with it coping mechanisms oh that's great here's some information yeah. on substance abuse not just Here's our substance abuse policy, and this is what we've got to do, yeah. and this is your yeah. your. That's all. That's all to do with insurances and all the rest yes. of the liability like, stuff. The liabilities and all the the corporate greed that's out there. Mm -hmm. Get back to the people. Get back and give them understanding and knowledge on what is substance abuse, because mm -hmm. I can guarantee you, ninety nine percent of the pipeliners that I've been around don't don't even know. <laughs> They wouldn't say, oh, yeah, I abuse substances. No, 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 that's just party. That's normal. Most people don't. Most people who have a substance abuse, some know, some have some insight to it, but a lot of people, they don't realize it's, um, yeah. Which, oh, look, why I, would I, you I, know, I guess, but, yeah. You know, most people are alcohol, you know, like I, it, was a, it, it was an expensive habit, but what yeah. frightened me wasn't that I'd never missed work or anything like that. What frightened me, was what I could handle, yeah, and still function. That was the that was the wake up moment for me. That was a very frightening. Like, yeah, I think you might have a problem here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks a little different on everybody, um, but yeah, it's it doesn't take much to diagnose somebody with a substance abuse issue. No, but the the, the thing from a company's perspective is to have that information there where people can readily access it, access it and then go mm -hmm. okay well here, I might have here are the problems. signs here are the yeah here's the, but here's some ways that you can replace that here's mm -hmm. some solution it's all about yeah. solutions not just well and then you know where to go from there too to um if it seems like a severe problem that's when you should really start looking for somebody who specializes in substance abuse counseling or looking for it's like a 12-step group or maybe it's like detox inpatient something like that that's that's where you know that's a starting point and it's again something i can help with um i can help i can help find those services too exactly and that's you know that's back to what we do as well we don't know everything 
but we yeah. certainly know. Before. And there's just some things that I like with what I do with my business that I don't want to do. Like yeah. if that, like I don't, I'm not going to advertise myself as a substance abuse counselor. I, I have done that, but it's what I'm doing with my business is not substance abuse counseling. So then if that's what I feel somebody needs, we find a good one. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's what a deal service up. Again, get your, you know, if you're a large mining organization, get the questionnaire out, get that mm-hmm. information pilot, and then work on that management um, tool yeah. to have the, the, the company serve up where everyone can access it because here's yeah. the common denominators. Maybe you don't need to talk about communication. Maybe communication has nothing to do. I highly doubt it, but, you know, there's no use pushing that kind of thing to your workers. Your workers yeah. are, here's the top six or the top five yeah. or whatever the case may be. So, again, solutions, solutions, yes. solutions, you know? And the, good, the thing, too, is like, um, and I think, I'm sure it just goes back to how much, what this is my passion, you know what I mean? And say if, if we're talking about substance abuse and somebody wants them in, I love talking about that. I love um, working with drug and alcohol clients was my favorite. I just, I loved it. And I love sharing my knowledge on that. Do I want to get in depth and do actual, um, you know, drug and alcohol counseling? Not really, but I love sharing my knowledge on that and what I know about it. Like it's, it's intri- I'm kind of a nerd. So all of that stuff, I just get excited about. Yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, that's getting back to what, what we really wanted to, to highlight, I suppose, was that, this, that, that for, the, for the people, the people of the construction industry that need the help, be aware that there's awareness campaigns and there's yeah. solutions providers. So not everybody by, who says they want to help you actually wants to help you. But also, too, on that, what, are the, what is their experience? And this was something that I was thinking about today when we were and I was thinking about, okay, what do I really, what's the points that we want to get across during this video? Sometimes someone in your industry certainly has in-depth knowledge of how it works, like if you're going to talk about pipelines and all of that. But when it comes to the specialities of the brain, the mind, you know, how people react to certain situations and all of that, you don't need an expert in the industry. You need an expert in that, Yeah. you know? Yeah, it'd, it'd be like um, working with, say, working with somebody who's addicted to heroin and you're trying to help them. You don't want another heroin addict ad- helping them. 100%. 100%. You know, you yeah. don't want somebody who is in active addiction helping somebody who's in active addiction. Yeah. You want somebody, and you really, like, for me, I wouldn't, like, I, there are, like, peer support groups and stuff for, like, in that situation, people who have gone through it. But when you're getting real help, you don't want somebody you want somebody completely neutral that yeah. like understands your environment and things like that, but hasn't done it themselves. You want somebody completely neutral because if not, you just go down this, um, this path of like, oh yeah, and this happened to me and this happened to me. And then it's just a bitch session. It's not really a productive sort of thing. And that got me to, because the reason why I say that is because you, you highlighted some things during the last month where people have done I'll say it's a five minute online course and now you're an expert and got a certificate in that. That kind of stuff is infuriating for those that have knowledge, you know what I mean? Oh, it's beyond infuriating. Like me and I see people over, oh, I'm a mechanic. Yeah. Like, okay, no problem. Like, I, yes. have you been trained by a reputable dealer? You know, like all of those kinds of things. Like they're, they're, they're so polars apart that my uncle giving me a certificate to say that I can pull a spark plug out of a lawnmower doesn't classify you as a mechanic. Yeah. Oh, that stuff is so infuriating. It's like, you know, like I didn't go to school for as long as I did and jump, you know, and study and work my ass off and all that stuff to be able to call myself a licensed social worker or a mental health professional. You know, I, I think of the people that I, that taught me when I was in school and, you know, my, she's a good friend of mine now Heather she's she's dedicated her whole career to to helping people and to understanding people and she's the most qualified person I know and and that's a slap in the it's a slap in the face to people like her to people like me you know for somebody just well I took a 
I took an online course. Yeah, I'm certified. But again, from an industry perspective, you're wondering why you have problems in the industry. Yeah. Giving someone a safety advisor, a first aider, something like that, another online course to go and do and say, no, no, we're tackling the problem. We've got it in-house. It's all good to go. Yeah. This is why the industry is not changing. You're just getting more people with more courses, with more nonsense. Mm -hmm. Get a hiring professionals to come and And you're allowing non-trained people to deal with the most delicate asset you have. 100%. Yeah. You know, like I just, I don't think people truly understand the severity or the delicateness of mental health and people. <laughs> I mean, they we're don't. talking about people. Yeah, because it hasn't directly happened to them yet. Y- yet. Yeah. Yet. You know, mm-hmm. and the way that the, the world is moving and how quickly the world's changed, there's another video for another day. Don't get me started. But the way that it's going, this is only going to accelerate. And I mean, seriously. Yes. And everything's yeah. accelerating right now. Like just think of the last two years, just the craziness of everything. It's just been one thing after another, after another, after another for, you know, what, like 18 months or whatever now. It's going to accelerate and it's going to seriously accelerate. It's going to amplify like nothing else. Now is the time to try and address these issues if you can, because or have a plan, have a plan, have, have some, some have something in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. Just sending someone for a, you know an online course and thinking that you've got it all in house. It honestly, it's like saying to someone, you know, go and you know watch a couple of YouTube videos on pulling machines apart, and I've got myself a mechanic. I mean, how many, how many machines have I inspected with you? Would you trust me to fix one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd you have talked you through a few repairs on your scooter. <laughs> yeah, true. I am quite the that. scooter mechanic now. Hashtag but, follow me. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't send me out to, I mean, you know, no. I send me out to get some pictures and stuff of it and tell me, like, I can tell you what I see, but you're not, are you going to have me go fix it? Yeah. I doubt exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> But it's like me with my um, abrupt nature trying to console someone. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't do that. Like, no, no, you need to. I wouldn't want you to do it. (laughs) You're like, I feel like you really make the problem worse. (laughs) Are you better now? (laughs) Yeah. Can you stop that now, please? Thanks. It's really. (laughs) Yeah. We're all experts. We're all experts in our own field. And if you're not an expert at something, find out what is your passion and become an expert yeah. at it. Sure, that's for yeah. sure. But that's something I really wanted to um, to highlight, I suppose, Lindsay. That um, you know, just for the people out there that that might be struggling, that are struggling, we feel you when you can't get the right help. That's yeah. why we're doing what we're doing with Lindsay's business. That's why we're making it accessible to the people. We don't want to be mm-hmm. gatekeepers. We want to mm-hmm. offer real solutions. And you need to understand that when you're trying to get through all of this, even as a business owner, ask some questions. Okay, what is it? What is, who is it that you help and how is it that you help them? Two questions. Two questions. If they can't answer that simply, quickly, and effectively, move on. forget it. They Move on because they've got mm-hmm. more work to do. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. It's as simple as that, you know, like, and that's what Lindsay's doing with her business. It's getting directly to the workers with solutions in the construction industry. Yeah. I feel like companies get a little bit of a complex when they start, when people come in and tell them you need to be, and I never do that. I never go in and say, you need to be doing this. But when, when this topic comes up, I feel like people get a little bit of a complex that I'm telling them they're not doing it something yeah. enough. But it's, it's really not that. I, I'm just trying to open their eyes to other things that they're just too busy to know. Yeah. They're not trained to see. Well, like, it's not their fault. It's all to help them. Like, yes. I wish people could see your passion of how you want to help people. So, like, my passion, when I get irate driving down the road, <laughs> which is when people yeah. I just see pure waste on construction sites, I'm like, yeah. give me that money. Yes. If you've got enough money to waste like that, give it to me. Yeah. I'd love See to see what I can it. do with it. 
yeah yeah it's, yeah it's crazy you know it, it really is so be really vigilant i suppose with where you find your information business owner person whatever you know if you've got questions reach out to Lindsay. yeah you know, send yeah. her a message dm her you know like how excited a- do you, how excited do i get to get messages even when they're yeah. negative like that one i got oh, yesterday that- i kind of made me like oh god here we well, go you got that negative message and then followed up and i saw in the calendar that you'd added someone to the calendar now they reached out to you i'd known mm-hmm. this person uh, many many years ago when i first started in the industry yeah they're now working for one of the premier biggest groups at what they do, you know right now plus he's on the board of something else and it's when you get that it totally outweighs that yeah any more of those messages i just kind of um i like those too i almost like those more because it gives me um it gives me a chance to change their mind i guess you know like i think through the conversation through that conversation that guy probably i think the last message i got was like now we're he's like oh yeah we're on now we're on the same wavelength or something like i it was able to be a productive conversation but that's a really good point too, Lou. Like those people, sometimes that's the only way they know how to communicate. So yeah. that's them now mm-hmm. actually for help. You yes. know what I mean? They don't know that it's help, no. but they're actually reaching out for that, you know? Yeah. Someone, I keep saying, like even a negative comment, someone has, you, you've affected someone that much that they've taken time out of their day yeah. to write something to you, yeah. you know? Take it mm-hmm. as a badge of honor. Because it, oh, I do, it. yeah. Well, how excited do I get? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well i really hope that's helped guys i um i really wanted to shine a spotlight on that with Lindsay and i've been trying to do this for a long time but with the travels that i've had here and some of the engineering that we've been doing just been a little bit difficult but too uh, busy for me apparently yeah well i certainly I know how made it time is. on yeah. the, <laughs> our friday over here too so mm-hmm. and it's past six o'clock i'm not even going to get a car park when i get home tonight they all will be gone. Well, I'm so flattered thank you <laughs> <laughs> but it was something that really needed to be said because it's it's these are why we've got the problems in the industry and you've got to call them out you can't tiptoe around them you can't you know you and can't I'm the master t- I'm the master tiptoeer so exactly I know I know that's why I want to do it I know that yeah. you've been avoiding this conversation too <laughs> it had to be done yeah I tiptoe around my dog I don't even like to make my dog mad so yeah, but you I'll tiptoe around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't right, like guys. I don't like calling people out, but yeah. No, no, but sometimes when they're when they're hindering helping people, you have to. Yes. Simple yes. as that. You know, Definitely. and that's that's the message to be left with all of that. Definitely. Anything else you need to you think you should add? I don't Lou? think so. I think we covered it. As always. Yeah. Over the next month or so, we'll get the information out to people about the um, the subscription service and yes, the, put the put the whole package uh, together. Put the packages together. It's something that we've been working on in the background, so we just wanted to let you know about that. But it's uh, it will be released. And uh, look, subscribe up to it. It's yeah. going to be yeah, cheap as chips, as they yeah. As I'm excited. Cheap as chips, bro. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Until Thank next you, week. Chris. Thanks very much for listening. Oh, thanks, Lou. Thanks for all your wealth of knowledge on that. Thank uh, on you. This really important. Learn from really the best. <laughs> all right, Lou. All right, Construction World. Thanks very much from uh, from myself here in uh, in the United Arab Emirates and Lou in the US of A. Until next week, stay safe, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Also. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our new episodes. We always love hearing from you guys, so if you have any topics you'd like us to discuss or just anything you'd like to add, leave a comment and we'll be happy to share our thoughts. Once again, thank you for watching, and I I truly hope this added some value to your construction world.